Hey guys, Romney Reaper here, back with a quick little cinema trip video. Very, very exciting one because I'm outside the cinema right now, about to watch Avatar. Yep. Obviously, they re-released it last weekend. You know, they build up a bit of anticipation for Way of Water. I, I didn't see it last week, so don't worry, darling. But there I'm about to watch Avatar. I've got my 3D glasses here, ready to see the film. This is my first time properly watching the film, so you know. Seeing it the way it's meant to be seen, you know. But yeah, I'm gonna go in, get my snacks, get my seat, and watch Avatar in 3D. Fanta here and popcorn, ready to watch Avatar in 3D. Let's enter Panda World. So yeah, just back from seeing Avatar in 3D. Obviously, as you know, they re-released this film and the cinemas, you know, to drum up a bit of hype for Way of Water, which releases at Christmas. They obviously drum up a bit of hype earlier this year by premiering the trailer with screenings of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So now we're getting closer and closer to release, and obviously, you know, we're going to really start to get the marketing machine rolling. But, you know, and this is definitely a great way to get it started off because they included new footage from Way of Water, which I will talk about later, and I want to understand a slightly tweaked ending, but really this is, you know, getting the original film back on the big screen in 3D, IMAX 3D, to re-familiarise audiences with Pandora before the sequel. This is actually my first time properly sitting Watching the film, as I stated earlier, I first time I've probably seen bits and pieces on TV. I remember like nine years ago, I think it was. I uh, I was in an electronic shop and the uh, and had all the TVs up and obviously to demonstrate the technology, the capabilities of it, they were playing Avatar on all those screens. So, but really, actually sitting down watching it from beginning to end this is my. First time viewing it, so yeah, we're going to have a review. So, Avatar follows Jake Sully, who's a wheelchair bound marine who is sent to Pandora on like a scientific expedition after his assigned his brother Tommy has died and he takes his place because their genomes are the same. And he's recruited to take part in the Avatar program, which allows humans to inhabit the bodies of the native species of Pandora, the Navi. However, the real reason humanity is on Pandora is to mine a rare and valuable source called unobtainium and military are using Jake to get to this. So inevitably, his loyalties are divided between the people of Pandora they become grown attached to, and the actual people he was born to. So yeah, you know, obviously over the years, you know, there's the usual the who the critiques. Oh, it's just the derivative. It's dances with wolves in space. You know, just sort of that ad nauseum. Uh, i tell you what, yes, there are some slight issues I have with the storytelling in the film. But being derivative is not one of them, because holy f wow. This is unironically one of the most like, singular and breathtaking experiences you probably have on the big screen. Like, is like 
through and through, you know, just James Cameron's vision for a, a big sweeping fantasy epic. And it is just thrilling to watch a filmmaker's vision being realised on such a large scale. Like the cinematography here is just on another level. The vast sweeping shots capturing Pandora and all its beauty and these beautiful like bright LED neon colours. It it is simply stunning to look at. But and the the 3D just really enhances that and just really immerses you into Pandora. It is simply just like all the 3D has depth, but it's not like it's popping out at you in a really obnoxious manner, like you know what 3D films tend to be. That's why the trend died out in the first place. But but done properly, like in this film. It can really, you know, heighten the world of the film and just really immerse the viewer in it. And that is what Avatar does so, so well. It is just an extraordinarily immersive experience. And, you know, when the action happens, yes, it's a long film. You know, there's a lot of, like, you know, storytelling and world building. But there's, when the action happens, you know, and the final act is a really on a really grand scale but uh, don't get me wrong there's scope to you know a lot of the earlier action beats in particular a scene involving dragon taming that it was just simply stunning to watch but when it ha the action happens it is on a real grand scale and it is just thrilling to see 3d the cinematography the special effects which Surprisingly aged extremely well considering the film's 13 years old. <laughs> but all of that just really immerses you in it and when the action beats come, as I say, you really feel the scale and scope of it all. It properly is a big screen epic. It, it's limited 3D run, re-release run that is coming to now, so definitely get to it in 3D. It's all you know, all you know, all this world building stuff you know is topped off by James Horner's score, rest in peace. <laughs> it feels really elegant and yeah, epic, and it really heightens the the grand scope of the film. It's it's wonderful, and all the the characters are fairly well developed and likable. But you know we've got. Jake Sully, played by Sam Worthington. A lot of people will you know, probably complain that about his performance. I actually didn't mind. I think it works well for the character. You know, he's meant to be a bit of a dumb jarhead. I did sort of hear Sam Worthington's like, natural Australian accent sort of break through. Because he's, he's trying to you know, play an American. So there's definitely a sort of patchy attempt at an accent there, but it's fine, it didn't bother me too much. I was invested in Sully's journey, so. And it was, you know, really thrilling seeing him rally all the Navi to fight back against the humans or the sky people. And, you know, we've, on the rest of the human side of things, we've got Stephen Lang as a really entertainingly hateable Colonel Quaritch. He's such a fun villain. I'm happy to see he's returning for the sequel, which kind of surprised me because spoilers for a 13 year old film, by the way, he gets impaled twice <laughs> with arrows to the chest. But also on the, on the Navi side of things, we've got Neteri, played by Zoe Saldana. I, you know, I really liked her character and her building bond with with Jake and and yeah this is like the heart of the film and to sell it extremely well now 
as for the storytelling, I really liked how it built the world, you know. I really liked how it built the culture, the landscape, the inhabitants of Pandora. You know, it goes really great lengths to, you know, visually explain themselves in great detail. So, you know, we, you know, which, you know, again, adds to all of the immersion from the fantastic visuals. And hell, I've even entertained like a couple of the human side of things, you know, because you know, obviously well, the promise of going back to Pandora, but but also because you know it's there's the whole the whole story was just very entertaining. I have some issues with how the story was told though, because like, it starts off kind of slow, you know, as we're setting all this up, you know. I was mainly just waiting for a doctor to get to the good stuff to get to the to get to Pandora. And once it does, it definitely picks up massively, but you know, you've got to spend a bit of time, you know, actually properly easing us into the world through like exposition dump narration. And I will say that there is throughout the film mass is sort of present as well. Obviously this is like for the most part presented as video logs from Jake, but there are some moments where I feel like they could have definitely dialed back to the use of narration a bit, just to like, you know, just let the story visually tell itself and just allow the audience to really soak it all in. But honestly, all in all, I really, really enjoyed this film. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. But, but yeah, I am really, really looking forward to seeing Way of Water now. I, I was kind of excited for it to begin with, you know, with it being like, you know, an event film and all that. But now after seeing the original film on the big screen, I'm really excited for what James Cameron has in store going forward. Alright, so... One of the big selling points of this re-release was that they were including brand new footage from Avatar The Way of Water. And yeah, this new footage looks really, really good. From what I understand, the footage shown varies from area to area, but the the scene that I got shown at the screening was scene of a teenage Navi waking up on top of like a like a whale creature and eventually saving it by removing a harpoon from one of its fins and befriending it. And yeah the as I said it looked really good. The underwater footage, which obviously is the big selling point of wave water, looked stunning. Now, like, I can't wait to, you know, see this scene actually in context with the rest of the film. And obviously, you know, there's going to be a ton more underwater scenes. So, I'm very, very excited for that. And yeah, all in all, Avatar, I'm going to give the film 8 out of 10. I have obviously some issues with the storytelling and pacing. And maybe some slight... It's just the acting, but all in all, I really enjoyed it. I'm very excited to see what comes next. Um, yeah, 3D looks to be coming back. You know, Jaws the other week. Now this, uh, obviously, the whole thing will come back live or dies based on how well Way of Water does. So let me know down in the comments. Have you seen Avatar? What do you think of it? What? footage were you shown at the re-release are you excited for way of water and do you think a big 3d resurgence is on on the horizon let me know all that down in the comments don't forget to leave a thumbs up button if you enjoyed don't forget to subscribe button if you're new and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss an upload <laughs>